Well, good evening, everybody. I am uh, I'm just heartened by the number of people I see in this room. I asked my team, why, why weren't we meeting at the church? And I think I got my answer when I walked in this room. We've probably outgrown um, the place where we have been meeting uh, for, for many, many years. I want to uh, acknowledge Sue and the Community Partnership for the Prevention of Homelessness. Give them a big round of applause uh, for the work that they do. Uh, each and every year on uh, on the the, the tough um, work uh, that we are in together, uh, and that is to make sure that everybody in Washington D.C. Ha has a safe and affordable home. Uh, and I too want to acknowledge the council members Brianne Nadeau, the Ward One council member, uh, and Brianne also chairs the council's committee on human services. Uh, and Alyssa Silverman at large. Let's thank Alyssa for being here as well and for her support of our uh, activities to end homelessness and uh, create affordable housing in the district. I too want to acknowledge very quickly uh, my team who I gave a big charge four years ago uh, and they have been smart, uh, strategic, uh, and tough uh, where, uh, where all of those things were necessary uh, to help us achieve uh, the uh, improvements um, that, that we have so far, but also chart the path for the work that remains. Uh, let me introduce Laura Zeilinger, who directs our Department of Human Services. <laughs> Christy Greenwald, who is our ICH director. And Holly Donaldson, who is the director of DHCD in the DC government. Uh, so let's just say uh, that the plan that the ICH uh, laid out for all of us to follow uh, was, was bold, uh, and it, it was also required steady, consistent leadership and investment. Uh, and what we uh, have demonstrated in the last four years is that with steady, consistent leadership and investment, uh, we can knock down our numbers and knock them down very significantly. In four years, we saw uh, a significant decrease in family homelessness, uh, people coming into um, the system at all. Uh, we know that we prevented almost 5,000 families with homeless prevention services for, from needing shelter. That's a big number, and I want to congratulate our team. Uh, we, we changed policy that has made a significant difference. We thought it would. Uh, now, four years later, we can say that it absolutely has. Uh, we know in our city, our law requires that we provide shelter during hyperthermia season, uh, this season. Uh, but what Laura convinced me of is that uh, if we do it all year, Mayor, if we extend the time that we accept families into our homeless services system, we can actually serve them better and prevent more families from coming uh, into care. So we uh, extended um, sheltering families instead of just during hyperthermia season uh, to 12 months out of the year. And what do you know? The numbers went down uh, because we were serving families when they had emergencies no matter the time of year and we were better able to service them sometimes to prevent it sometimes to get them into emergency shelter where they could exit more quickly uh, and that was a, a, a bold uh, a risky in some ways idea and one that's paying off for DC family so let me congratulate Laura and her team uh, for the work that we have moving forward uh, we were able to shutter D.C. General. Um, we, like every Washingtonian, uh, f five years ago now, uh, really charged me with making sure we did better by our homeless families, and that's what we set out to do. I'm very proud that today we have opened uh, four short-term ha housing facilities in wards four, seven, and eight, um, and the remainder of our short-term family uh, housing facilities will be delivered in 2019 uh, and 2020. Uh, what we uh, challenged D.C. residents with was being a part of the solution. We know that homelessness is a citywide problem uh, that calls for a citywide solution, and that's why we called for all eight ward strategy. 
we're going to extend that all eight ward challenge uh, in the next four years to help us achieve the affordable housing that we need throughout the city. And we're going to need each of you to be with us. We know that we need 36,000 new units in Washington, D.C. by 2025 just to achieve our portion of what this region needs, which is 240,000 units of housing. Uh, and so I am going to ask every part of the city, just like we did, uh, to create short-term family housing, uh, to create a goal uh, for affordable housing for D.C. residents. Uh, and just like uh, the short-term family housing facility was the facilities discussion was tough sometimes, we think that discussion can be tough too, uh, but we're going to do it together so that we can achieve the housing we need for D.C. residents. Housing is the single biggest issue on the minds of D.C. residents. Those who are homeless, uh, those who are middle class, those who thought they were middle class, and one government shutdown showed them uh, that we are all, uh, only one, not all, but many of us, are one, two, three paychecks away from needing help. People who never thought they would need help in a food line are in a food line. People are not sure how they're going to make their mortgage payment or rent payment are thinking up about exactly that and how they too might need um, help from the government. Uh, so the systems that we are creating uh, will allow us to be more resilient for all DC residents. Uh, and you are definitely a part of the work um, that's ahead. Uh, and we have the tough work tonight, uh, and it is tough work, of seeing uh, how many of our residents are unsheltered. Uh, and what we know uh, is that we can shelter our residents. Uh, we want to know where they are. We want to touch them. Uh, we want them to know about the services that are available to them, and we want them to come inside if they're willing. Uh, and we are also challenged uh, with making sure that all of the improvements that we've made in the family system uh, we're all seeing, also seeing on the single side. Uh, and uh, the last thing I'll mention is how proud I am that we just put out a solicitation to rebuild St. Elizabeth's East, uh, where we house single men uh, in Ward 8. In uh, the facility that we will build there, we will all be able to be proud of because not only will it provide emergency shelter, uh, it will help people begin to transform their lives. So stick with us, um, and we, uh, together with the investments of so um, uh, of our taxpayers, can solve um, the scourge of homelessness in our city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. I'd now like to bring up Ward 1 Council Member, my Council Member, Brianne Nadeau, and recognize that we're in this wonderful Ward 1 facility. Thank you. Welcome to Ward 1, everybody. It's great to have you here tonight. I'm Brianne Nadeau. I'm the Ward 1 Council Member, but I am also the Chair of the Human Services Committee. Um, once again, beginning Council Period 23, which I'm very excited about because, as you know, we did not get everything done in my first two years as committee chair, and unfortunately we still have um, homelessness here in the District of Columbia. So um, we're here just a few blocks away from the future short-term family housing site in Ward 1, which will be at 14th and Clifton. And as the mayor said, um, that was also a hard-won battle. Um, you know, when we go out in community and we have these conversations about providing housing for those in need, they're often really difficult conversations. Um, we have uh, several other sites in Ward 1 where we're having similar conversations where we're rebuilding public housing or we are um, multiplying the number of units in an area. And people come to me and they, they worry. They say they're worried about the concentration of poverty. And I look all around me and I think, gosh, I see a concentration of wealth. Um, Ward 1 is the most diverse ward in the District of Columbia, and when someone says to me in Columbia Heights they see too big of a concentration in poverty, I say, I see some really expensive homes right there down the street. And so the, my point is, we need to be building more housing. We need to be building it everywhere, everywhere in the District of Columbia. We need to have people stand up and say, yes, please build this housing here in my backyard, instead of people saying no 
not in my backyard. So I hope you'll be with me on that because we have a plan to end homelessness, but it starts with building more housing and building it everywhere. In Ward 1, not only are we going to have um, short-term family housing for families, we're going to have 15 units of permanent supportive housing for senior women. Thank you, Mayor. We're very excited about that. And because the mayor did such a good job of talking about all the work that is going on across the city, uh, I just want to add one thing, which is that um, we need regional solutions, too. Yeah. And um, as a member of the, I'm now the vice chair of the COG Committee on Human Services, our uh, Council of Governments for the region. Um, and last month led a conversation with Prince George's County and with Montgomery County, and I thank Director Greenwald for participating, where we continued conversations that have been having, been having uh, kind of quietly about how do we share data, how do we talk about serving a person as opposed to, you know, uh, our constituents and your constituents, and how do we track um, when and why people are going back and forth between jurisdictions, and how do we as a region solve homelessness uh, so that people don't keep showing up without the support that they need in different jurisdictions. It, these are tough questions, but we need to solve those together. The District of Columbia, I would say more than anyone in the region, has stepped up. Um, and we see now our colleagues in other counties are, um, are coming along. But I think it's really going to take some bold solutions. It's going to take committing resources together that are shared. Um, which is always a difficult thing to justify um, for each legislature. Um, but I think, I think that's our path forward. So stick with us um, because we're going to keep at that work. Um, and stick with us as we're looking at things like the comprehensive plan that's going to allow us to determine where we can build more housing all across the city um, and allow us to fulfill the needs of those who are homeless. We don't want people living out on the street. Um, we want a more dignified shelter system but we also want people to just have a place to call home permanently so we don't have to convince them to come to shelter for the night so we can tell them we have your home. Um, so thank you to all the volunteers who are here tonight to help count. My hope is that people are inside tonight and that you have a quick count um, and that you can encourage those who are out to come in. Um, and I thank you and I hope that each year this work becomes a little bit easier and a little less necessary. Thank you. So I would now like to bring up Councilwoman at Large, Alyssa Silverman, and recognize her for being such a champion for employment because we certainly need to focus on employment for our residents to be able to afford the housing we're creating. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. OK, good to see everyone here. Uh, I, I want to share something with you. Uh, earlier today, uh, Councilmember Nindo and I were with uh, some daisies. These are some kindergartners and first graders who are in the Girl Scouts. And we talked about civic engagement and the importance of being involved in your community and looking out for each other. And uh, I, I think this right here is an example of great civic engagement. So first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming out, because what you're doing is very important. Um, once the federal funds get released uh, by our egomaniac uh, crazy man president, uh, you know what you are doing tonight is so important, right? Because we need those federal funds uh, to help end homelessness and what you are doing in the point in time count helps us with that. You're helping our city. So let's give a big round of applause to you for helping our fellow neighbors. Then I think um, it, it can't be said enough, and I want to thank the mayor for making good on her promise. To, to, to close DC General. And I want to thank Laura Zeilinger and Christy Greenwald uh, for really putting the emphasis on family homelessness and, and making sure that we end family homelessness in this city. Um, so a round of applause for that. I think the mayor really deserves it. 
But I have to tell you, so this is the warmest point in time count that I can remember, actually, in the four years of that, now five years, I guess, that I've been a council member. Um, and that doesn't really make it any better. It just makes it maybe a little easier for us tonight. Uh, but I just want to tell you that um, what, what um, always strikes me about the point in time count is we do need to move to an emphasis on singles homelessness. Um, and I've participated in the point in time count to get a sense. It's important, obviously, obviously, to get the count so we can get the federal funds, but I think it also helps elected officials like me understand why people are on the street, Sue. And there are more, and I think you'll learn that tonight if this is the first time that you're participating. Um, you know, if people give all kinds of reasons that were really illuminating to me, um, they don't feel safe in our single shelters. Um, they are couples, and uh, we don't allow couples uh, to be together in shelter without children. Um, they have pets who are really important to them. Um, and they want to be with their pets. There are all kinds of reasons um, that people are on the street, and I think our challenge is to understand those reasons and then to work, build the trust uh, with our residents to get them into shelter, and I know that's what DHS is trying to do every single day. Um, so um, I thank you all again for coming out here. Uh, we, we will end homelessness, both family and singles homelessness, uh, if we are all in this together. Um, and that is what we are doing tonight. So thank you all so much, and good luck, and stay safe tonight. So I'd just like to recognize how fortunate we are to have such progressive leadership in the District of Columbia. I'd just like to take a brief moment to thank my team at the Community Partnership. Tom Fredrickson, wherever you are, likely hiding somewhere in the background. And just one final piece before we all send you out into the streets to do the work of the evening. I want to bring up Jen Monet, who's going to give you a few logistical details, and then we're off to do the count. Thank you. Good evening again for the third time. <laughs> the last time, I promise. Um, just a few tidbits before you all head out. Um, for those of you who are kind of pairing off and riding in, in cars with each other, just be mindful of how you are getting back home. If you're relying on Metro, um, keep in mind times that trains or buses may stop running as you guys will be out really late. If you are driving and you are parked um, downstairs in the school's garage, or across the street in the Target um, Plaza garage, both lots close at 11.30. So if you were planning on leaving your car and kind of go out, make sure you take your car, move it at 11.30, or it's gonna get locked inside. Um, oh, and most importantly, make sure you have your team leads number. I'm sure you guys are gonna kind of split up to cover more ground. Um, make sure that you have your team leads cell phone number and that they have your numbers. And I think that is it. Thank you again. Be safe. Are we closing out? Yes, and thank you. Thank you.